Hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here. Welcome back to Painted Studio. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas uh, day, Christmas day after, holiday weekend. We are zooming into the new year in just a couple days here. So we are only open today and tomorrow. Uh, and then we're gonna cl be closed New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and we will reopen on Saturday. So, you know, obviously, since we've been on holiday, there haven't been a lot of live videos. I think I did the last one, uh, I think I did the last one on Christmas Eve. Hey Kay and Kathy Brown, nice to see you here. So, um, we're gonna do something kind of easy to ease us in through the holidays. Come January 1, we are full, full force furniture. We're gonna do a desk that I have uh, in my, my warehouse area and we're going to uh, do it from the ground up so you get to see exactly how things are going to be done. We are also now offering slowly, one at a time, uh, classes one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you're welcome to come in here or you can uh, arrange for something. Um, we're not, tr I, I've looked into doing some classes online and the problem is that if I teach a full class online, you all have to have all the materials. Um, so we may do some single projects online starting in the new year that will be sign up classes. Uh, but if you are interested in coming and taking one of my classes, you can come in and we're doing it one-on-one. -on -one. I already have one booked for January. Um, so we're just doing it safely so that everybody who wants to attend can do so without, you know, worrying about getting sick. So we're, I'm trying to take into consideration all of those things. All right, so now that I've babbled about that, I have got to tell you we've got some new molds being cast over here. I have, I, I finally got one that I've been waiting for, a, a mold that I've been waiting for for months. Um, I'm going to show it to you briefly. I can't show you much more than this. Um because it's full of epoxy right now. We're gonna uncast that and we're gonna create some cool stuff with what I'm casting. And today we're going to work on um, cast resin, deer skull and antlers. Now I have these, I, this is actually for a client. Um, about a year or so ago, you might've seen me doing one of these in silver with gemstones. Well, he fell in love with it and commissioned me to do it with black and black metallics and black gems. So we're gonna work on that today and I, I cannot tell you how far we're gonna get because it depends on how things are going. Happy New Year, Kay. Mayor, happy New Year to you too. Nice to see you both here. And I'm gonna flip, turn the um, extra spotlight on, which I can't have on while I've got the camera up because I can't see. It goes right into my eyes. But we're gonna flip that on and then, oh God, that is blinding. Uh, flip this down so you can see what I'm working on. Okay, so here is our deer skull. Um, this is cast resin. I bought it on Amazon. Um, and I painted it with black set coat. Uh, these, these come white or off-white. You can see up close that there's already some sculpturing done into the details here. We painted it black and then covered it with foil adhesive. And the antlers come separately. They are meant to be... Uh, installed one at a time like this and you keep them separate both for the painting and for shipping so that um, it'll all go back into the box that this came in and I can ship it out when it's done. All right, so he wants black on black, which we're gonna do, but I think I'm gonna add a little interest and this is somebody I've known for many years, so I know what I can and cannot do to make him happy. And so we're gonna take, first we're gonna take a little of our pewter foil. Now, I will, again, I will run through what I did with this. I cleaned it down, I wiped it off with denatured alcohol to remove any um, tooling oils, any residue, any anything that needed to come off. And then I painted the whole thing black with black faux effects set coat. Then once that was cured, or I shouldn't say cured, once that was dry, um, it, I put on a layer of our Artsyville foil adhesive and um, let that set up for a good hour. Now, 
be, the reason I stop myself when I say cure versus dry. Dry and cure are two different things. Dry means I can touch it and it won't come off of my hands. Cure means that the drying and bonding process has gone all the way through all the layers and hardened up permanently. Drying on water-based paints takes 30 minutes around that kind of time unless you put it on really thick. Curing water-based products is 30 days. And the difference is that you can touch it, but you can't clean it. You might not, if it's a really delicate surface, you might not want to put anything on it. Um, and you certainly cannot scrub on it or anything. All right, so here's our pewter foil. And for those not familiar with foil, we put the Artsyville foil adhesive and you let it cure for at least 30 minutes. I'm sorry, at least 60 minutes. My brain is in different places today. You need to let it cure for at least an hour so it comes to a good, firm, hard tack. If it hasn't come that hard tack, when you release foil on it, you, uh, you risk having the foil not only not release, but then having the adhesive and the paints and everything grab onto the back of your foil and rip off when you pull it. That won't happen here. We have some foil adhesive in the little crevices that aren't cured up yet, but I'm not gonna stick the foil in there so it doesn't matter. All right, so I'm crunching out my pewter foil and we're gonna pounce. And this is not gonna show up like much of anything on camera because it's even really subtle to me. I also don't have to worry about my customer watching this because, well, even if he wanted to watch it, it wouldn't bother me. But I know he just doesn't tend to watch my videos. And he's in a different time zone, so that may be a lot of everything. Okay, so what I've done is quickly pounce that on. You can see... Uh, Hey, Desiree, thanks for popping by. So as you can see, I've released foil, but it won't look like much on here. I'm trying to catch, see if I can get a little light to catch it because it's with the, with the adhesive on here, it's also still super shiny. So it's really hard to see it, but I can see it up close. It's very delicate, very pale. And then we're going to take our... That was the, not the right one. I took that one already. Where's my black? Here it is. I'm gonna take our black. And again, this is black metallic foil. And we're gonna put it over here and we're gonna scrub it. Now, again, I don't need this release to be perfect. I need it to make the skull look more metallic. And this is a hard surface. It's very ridgy. It's very um, intricate. It's kind of lumpy. So I know already that I'm going to have some challenges with my release. So as you can see, I've released, but it's not going to be perfect. And I'm okay with that. I just want a lot of metal on here. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you can see that it's now it looks like black metal on there. Look how cool that is. This has sort of a blackened pewter look with this combination applied the way I did it. Also, because we've used two colors on here, it kind of gives this some patina as well. Um, meaning that it makes it look aged as opposed to brand new and shiny, shiny, shiny. I like that old metal kind of look on there. And you can see I'm releasing it, but it is kind of subtle. And I really like it for that.
I'm not going in the nose and I'm not going in the eye sockets. I have other plans for those later, so I have applied no adhesive in there. Um, I really don't want to have to deal with it being sticky while I'm doing other stuff on here. Okay, so this black on black on black is just the coolest damn thing. Sorry for cursing, but you know, when I get excited about something, I forget you all are here and just pretend like I'm alone and I curse a lot when nobody's looking. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just do. I, I like to say I was a better person and didn't have a potty mouth, but yeah, I do. Under here. Now, the one place I did not apply foil adhesive is on the very base area of the back in here because this is going to sit up against the wall, so I don't really need to worry about creating that metal effect in there. I also don't have to really worry about scrub marks in this because everything I'm doing, it's so erratic and so irregular that the way I scrub it will not show. This is not a flat, smooth surface where I have to worry about my scrub marks. This is an incredibly uneven, irregular surface um, that I'm gonna have to you know, work on. Now, I had one spot that probably needed a little more cure time right there, and I almost pulled it off. Now, what I'm pulling here is just an extra blob of foil adhesive that um, hadn't finished curing. I just wanted to thin that out. It doesn't, didn't need to be sitting there that thick. Okay, let's turn this around, flip it on its side. And I messed up in here, so I got to get in that. Now, if you're not okay with working with a piece of adhesive that is this, or a piece of foil that's this big on a surface this awkward, cut it up. It'll work small. You can do that. You don't have to keep it in one big old sheet just because I have it in one big old sheet in my hand. All right, so I think I need a little more. Almost done, but we do have a whole nother couple of antlers and stuff to do, so. There's that. the reason I need to have the camera angled down is so you all can't see me squinting as I do this. I need to get my glasses checked, but this has not been the year to go <laughs> sit at the eye doctor. I've been avoiding going anywhere. Some places particularly glossy or sticky. That means I'd missed it with the foil adhesive. So I gotta keep checking to make sure I got it all. Especially on a piece as pitted and curvy and irregular as this is. He was gonna gonna purchase a silver one from me, and then said, "Could you possibly do it in black?" And I said, 
possibly? Of course I can do it in black. Okay, so we've got our skull metalized. And now you can see the details better because now it's not just shiny, 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 and weird. Uh, yes, it does. It gives it a really nice aged gunmetal look. So you might see, if I move it, you might see a little flash of brighter metal, like right here I can see it on my part. But then the rest goes a little more mute because that is the black foil over a little bit of gunmetal foil over black paint. Right, I'm going to grab my gun metal again because we're going to play with the antlers and we have to do those. And again, with the antlers, I did exactly the same thing as I did on the skull. I cleaned it, painted it with black set coat, and actually I had to do a little sanding on these because there were some rough spots, but cast resin is very easy to sand. And FYI, guys, when I buy this stuff off of Amazon, I don't get a wholesale price on there. I, buy, I pay for these the same price as anybody else. And what my client pays for is not just the skull that I bought, but all the work that I've done on it. Okay, so there's a little pewter on that. Let's grab this one. Got a little piece of black sticking to the end of it. There we go. Let's put a little pewter on this one. find the black. Let's do some black on the horns. Now, I did not put any foil adhesive down here. Why? Because I have plans for that, and this then gives me a clean, dry area for me to hold on to the antler um, while I do the foil release on the rest of it. And see, I called it antlers this time. I didn't call them horns. I'm never going to live down forgetting the word antler. Good Lord, y'all watched me on here. You know, I had moments where I forget the word the. So forgetting the word antler shouldn't be surprising. <laughs> All right, let's grab a little more foil. Oops, wrong side. That's what happens. You don't... And I'm going to show you, if you just saw me accidentally stick the wrong side down, you know what released off the foil? Nothing. So that's what happens. All you do is dull your adhesive and the ability for it to release if you put it wrong side down. And trust me, I get the wrong side stuck all the time. You just saw it, so... I usually get the wrong side stuck because I'm not paying attention like I wasn't just a minute ago. to make sure that the extra foil doesn't go flying into the hardening epoxy sitting next to me. Okay. 
And take your time when you do something like this. Don't rush it. You know, I know it's not always the most exciting thing to watch somebody do this. But I'm doing this for a client, so they deserve my complete and total devotion to the project. Sometimes when I do stuff for me, I can be a little lackadaisical. When I do something for somebody else, oh no. So you notice I'm touching it because there's so many angles on here. I just feel to see if I've missed a spot and I can usually feel it like I missed in here. And I'm gonna need more. I love black metallic foil. It's an unusual and often overlooked foil. but it is very elegant. All right, and I'm just turning it around catch light to see where I might have missed something. Yeah, it's a little sticky right there. Okay, that one's done. Ah, nope, I found one, I stuck my finger on the one spot I missed. Right there. Right. Well, let's not have that go flying on the floor. And then we have this one to finish up. And then we'll start applying the gems. and set it down without it sticking. Here. And I truly, as you can see, I am rotating it to see um, so I don't miss anything. So basically, I'm working on a 10 point buck right now. I never actually stop to count the tips on the antlers. But today I did. This is, there's five on each horn, so that makes it a 10 point. Unless I'm totally off my mark and forgotten all the hunting stuff my dad taught me, because I don't hunt anymore, but uh, I don't think so. And of course, if I am wrong, somebody there is going to let me know.
So yes, there are no real deer skulls being used in this video. It's cast resin, which of course actually makes it pretty durable too, which uh, if I was using real bones, they'd probably be a lot more brittle. All right, I think I need just a little more black and then we'll be done with the antlers. miss any of your questions because I'm looking down instead of up while um, I'm doing this. You know, I always go back, I always read them, and then I answer them in writing, which sometimes works better for some people because then they can refer back to it without having to go through the video again. Okay, so now we have foiled everything. And we can move on to the bejeweling stage. All right, I'm gonna, before we do that, I'm gonna flip this back up, give it, see if I missed any questions. Yes, Dana, it does have a steampunk look. Isn't that kind of cool? I appreciate all of you being in here with me. don't think, I think I answered everybody as they came along. Okay, so before we do the jeweling, which is right over here next to me to work with, we're going to be working with black flat back gems. Um, I want to address shipping because I did mention this to you before that we are recommending people choose UPS if they need things in a timely manner. The other thing I'm going to tell you flat out right now, we're in our cold shipping season. We know that postage, post office especially is delayed. So if you're ordering foil adhesive, it cannot freeze. So we recommend from now until spring using UPS only when you order foil adhesive because they get to you faster. Um, we've had issues where you know, stuff has wandered with UPS once or twice. We've had a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm chasing stuff down that had one day to go one place and it ended up in North Dakota and now it's going back to New York and then it's coming back here. So we really want to tell you that when we ship out our foil adhesives now, we ship them in thermal wrapping with heating, you know, little, the little hand warmers that you can put in your pocket. We put those in the box, but we do tell you, ship that UPS. Um, if we see orders coming in for foil adhesive where you're choosing a different post, uh, uh, you know, shipping option, we'll give you a call and discuss it with you because there's, you know, if it disappears 15 days to three weeks for the post office, um, it could very well be frozen when it gets to you and that's, you're gonna have spoiled products. So we don't want that to happen. Um, and I think that, cover, that covers the shipping issue. I wanted to address it specifically, the foil adhesive that's this way. Anything else, if you don't mind it taking a while, use regular post office. Um, if you need it in a timely fashion, we recommend U, uh, UPS. And another thing to remember is right now, UPS, the post office, even FedEx, they're not really guaranteeing overnight deliveries. Um, the last, I had to ship something overnight two weeks ago and it took five days to get there and I still paid the full overnight fee. So just understand what's happening with shipping. It's not something we can control, but we are doing our best to mitigate anything that might happen with shipping. All right, so now I've handled shipping, shipping, shipping. I'm bored with talking shipping. We're going to go back and jewel our head here. About that, I was trying to zoom in and I actually closed out the camera and that's not what I wanted to do. All right, I'm zooming it in so you can see what I'm doing a little better. 
and I'll try not to move it out of the screen, but let's face it, this is me. You know I forget that the camera's zoomed in. You know I forget my boundaries, so let's hope I don't really screw it up. All right, so I got off of the internet, you know, you can buy them anywhere. These are flat back crystals uh, in a couple different sizes. So I have larger ones and then I have smaller ones so that I can vary the way that these sit. And then I take them. Uh, I know these have resealable pouches on some of them. I hate those. I just prefer to pour them out and I'll probably use almost all of these just on this alone. Now I'm pouring out some of these and to make my life easy, first thing I do is separate out the ones that are facing up. I don't go into this with any real pattern in my brain. Um, I work with it because I've done this this particular skull before. I have no memory of how I, you know, what pattern I use to apply the gems. Um, some of them I don't really use when I just follow the curve of the skull. See, hope I get a, a good result. And every time you see me grabbing that pile of gems, it's because it flip when I grab like that. It flips over some more so I can just move them back over here. Instead, I'm, I'm trying to avoid having to flip them all over one by one. That's really time consuming. Um, I've done a lot of this gem work I did um, for one of my clients on their walls. I installed about 10,000 of these. Yeah, that was that was a couple of weeks of work. <laughs> that was long. And every once in a while I flip one of these back over just moving it back. Now these are relatively easy to flip over. I've had some of these that are a nightmare just trying to turn them colored side up. All right, we're gonna take some of these um, larger ones and we're gonna pour those out too because I work with both sizes at the same time. Now, these don't happen to have a silvered back so it makes it um, a little more challenging to see if they're right side up or upside down. But fortunately they're bigger, so my big old fat fingers. Can easily flip them over. So I don't know about where you are, but tonight we are expecting a heck of a snowstorm. But every time somebody in Chicago says snowstorm, it stops snowing. So, <laughs> all right, I'm using E6000 glue. Um, I like this because it's got a little bit of cushion, a little bit of bounce, it's good adhesive. And then I can easily, um, I have positioning time with it and it dries nice and clear. Now, the one thing I will tell you with the less expensive flat back gems, um, if these weren't black, it would cause these to kind of crinkle and pucker through uh, the clear crystal. I, I've tested this out on a bunch of different colors and it's just, it. this glue likes to dissolve that little bit of stuff on the back. That silvering on the back. Oh, great, this doesn't wanna. I need to grab a poker so I can poke through the hardened glue. Oh, there's one right there. Um, as you can tell, even on new tubes of this, it likes to build up. I clean it off regularly. That doesn't mean it stays cleaned off. And so, and it likes to harden a little. E6000 is like, I have a love-hate relationship with it. 
And I know a lot of people who use it regularly do. I love the glue. I just hate that it's such a gooey mess all the time. All right. I'm going to push this down. And I think maybe if I just roll the end over, I'll make my own life a little easier. All right, so I've got to turn this towards me just so I can see it, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to start right in here. Okay, now I use pressure tweezers. These are called inverse tweezers, so instead of pushing on them to keep them closed, I put you push on them to open them. But I'm not going to use them just the traditional way. Um, I have a habit of getting adhesive on my glue, my tweezers. I This is the pair of tweezers that I actually use to apply 10,000 gems. And then I use it as a dabber. Um, let me see that little bit of glue right on the tip. It doesn't transfer to the gems, but even if it did, it was it's cleanable. Um, and it helps me to, you know, build up my gemming, as I want to call it. Meaning that it allows me to not constantly have to worry about the wax from wax dabbers getting stuck on it. I'm using the smaller ones now on some of these bridges. Um, so this is, personally, I find this my favorite way to do it. Other people have other ways that work really well for them and that's just fine. This tool just fits my hand really well. client sees me doing this he's going to be so excited he's he's just doing his own place up for the first time the way he wants it with nobody else telling him what to do and this is one of the things he's been getting for himself all right I want to take my little poker thing here because I have a lot of glue that just wants to drip out of the um, e6000 tube I'm just going to take that on here, smear it on that. I don't waste glue if I can help it. As long as it's not hardened up, this is still usable glue. That's the, another of the things with E6000. It likes to seep out. You don't always keep the tube capped all the time. It wants to seep such a good glue that I suck it up. Oop, I don't want it to come down, so get in there with my finger. Oh, you're gonna fight me, you little stinker. There we go. I'm going to be working on this for several days. This is not going to be finished tonight. This is not going to be finished tomorrow, likely. It will take me a couple days to get just the gems laid on. The prep work is super easy. 
and as you saw, fairly quick, but you know, there's, there's more to it than just what you saw. The gem, the, the applying of gems takes a while. Okay, so I've gotten all of that out of there. And then once this whole thing is completely dry, it will be sealed. Um, I'll use a spray sealer on there because I don't want any of the sticky spots or the glue or anything to, to be an issue. E6000 has what they call a gem glue. It's literally the same glue as far as I've been able to determine, except that it has a little needle nose cap for it so that you can um, apply it to smaller areas, which is really great. But it has the same E6000 challenges, so be prepared to take the tip off, clean it out really well, and then check it about 16 times before you use it again. Like I said, it's one of my favorite products, but it's it, I just the tubes, the way it applies, is just such an annoying thing to me. I'm dropping my gems today. Uh, and I've tried some other companies' glues like uh, Aileen's Jeb Gemtac and stuff like that. I have yet to find one that really is just what I need it to be. That is as good and sticky and firm as E6000 while being less gooey. Super pretty when I'm done. So pretty. I already like how it's starting to form. And I'm trying to do the same thing on both sides, but understand that this was cast from a real skull and therefore will have irregularities and unevennesses because you know, no animal, just like no human, is perfectly symmetrical. Okay, so now you can see how the pattern is starting to build. And this is gonna be so pretty when it's done. Okay, everyone, let me zoom back out a little bit so you're not looking right at my nose, which, you know, is exactly the most flattering part of me. Um, <clears throat> So we're gonna keep working on this for the next couple of days. We'll have another project starting tomorrow, I'm sure. But don't forget, when we come back in the new year, we will be starting furniture, doing full projects so that you get to see it from beginning to end. And of course, if you have anything you'd like for me to be working on, if there's something that you're either, something that you've seen me do in the past that you're struggling to understand or something that you'd like to see developed, send me a message. Send us a message at the studio. You have just, you know, 
go to our page here on Facebook and just drop me a message. Please don't put the suggestions here. Um, I, it won't come back to me all the time. Also, I know I said I was going to do a contest this week. That's not happening. It's such a short week. We're only here for two days. It didn't make sense to do a contest. So starting next week, we're going to be doing a contest. I'm going to give you a little preview of what the contest is. The contest is going to be Tell Me Your Funniest, Most Bizarre, or Most Outlandish Tale of working for a client on a bigger job or creating something small, whatever your most ridiculous um, creating story happens to be. I have one I, and I'll tell the full story, but I was working for a client and ended up with a quart of paint poured down the back of my pants. Um, so I will tell that story. I've, I've been in the business a long time. I have a couple. Um, so this will give you a little time to think it up. And I'm the only judge. So make it a good story because it's going to need to get my attention. I will tell you next week what the prizes are, but because we skipped the month of December for prizes, it's going to be a good prize. I haven't decided all of it yet. I'm working all the details out, but I have some things already set aside for it. So that's the plan that will not be posted here. I will tell you more about the contest next week. We will have a dedicated contest thread, not this one. So next week when I put up the dedicated contest thread, you'll have had time because you're here watching with me. So you're already getting a little head start from anybody else. All right, everybody, have a wonderful day. We'll be back tomorrow. Enjoy your evening. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.